Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. Today we're featuring a replay from Flambass of the Omni Clan. Now Flambass is certainly no stranger to this YouTube channel. I've featured some of his replays before and if you don't remember the name from watching any of my videos then you may know the name from watching Omni defeat all comers in various different Kings of the Sea tournaments. He's not bad at World of Warships. In today's video, he's in the British Tier 10 light cruiser, HMS Minotaur. And yes, this is the Two Brothers map. And yes, right up ahead is the channel that runs down the two islands in the centre of the map. Now it's not unusual to see YouTube videos of people taking their ships right down this channel at the start of the battle here on Two Brothers, and winning a stunning victory against the enemy in the process. But what you don't see on YouTube are the countless battles where people try it and get absolutely ruffle stomped because it is an incredibly stupid thing to do, particularly right at the start of the match, when most of the enemy team are in a position to put shots into the broadside of your ship as you exit the channel mouth on the far side of those islands. On those rare occasions when you see a YouTube video of somebody pulling this sort of thing off and getting away with it, usually one of two things has happened. They're either in a battleship, something that has the health and armour to take the kind of inevitable beating that you're going to take once you exit the channel mouth on the far side of those two islands, or they're in a destroyer, something that's able to make it down that channel without being detected on the way. Or if they do get detected, a destroyer is also small enough and manoeuvrable enough to, hopefully, avoid the inevitable swarm of torpedoes that's going to be sent down that channel as a welcome gift from the enemy team. I don't think I can ever recall anybody getting away with this in a light cruiser. Certainly not alone. Well, challenge accepted. <laughs> Said Flambass, because that's exactly what he's doing here. For a moment there, I thought the destroyer with him was going to join him, but even the destroyer's thinking, nah, <laughs> sorry, nope, you're on your own, sunshine. Yep, and he very much is on his own. He's sailing down the central channel on two brothers in a light cruiser right at the start of the match, with no backup, no support, he's doing it alone. The one thing in his favour here is that there is no aircraft carrier on the enemy team, because if you're going to get spotted sailing down this channel, it's usually by aircraft, unless there's somebody on the enemy team trying to pull the same thing from the other side. Pay attention to how he does this. That rocky outcrop up ahead, that's what you need to take advantage of. We saw somebody do this a week or so ago in a Bismarck, and it's going to work exactly the same way. Your nose up to the corner, he hasn't been detected yet, and you have a look. Now the Minotaur is exceptionally good at this sort of thing because it has an exceptionally powerful engine. It accelerates, decelerates and reverses very very quickly, so if there had been something nasty on the other side of that rock, he would have been able to pull back around the far side and into cover before anybody would be able to shoot at him. But there wasn't anything nasty waiting. So he did get a little bit of luck there, nothing in any position to spot him as he came around the corner in the middle of the channel. But he didn't leave it all down to luck, because he made sure that if there had been something there, they wouldn't have been able to take a shot at him. He would have been able to get back into cover. Well, he's been spotted now, so there's no point in trying to still be subtle. So he starts unloading on that Atago over there, with his massed batteries of 152mm rapid-firing guns. The Atago's guns are pointing right at him. He can see him, but he's not firing. And he's at a range of less than 10 kilometers. Why do you suppose that is? Flambass has a pretty good idea. He's triggered his hydroacoustic search, and he's sailing backwards. The Atago must have fired torpedoes. It's the only possible reason I can think of for why he would have been staring straight at Flambass and yet not shooting him. Well, there's more than one reason, but it's always best to assume that your enemy does actually know what they're doing until they prove otherwise, and yep, there are the torpedoes, exactly as predicted. And he's already taking steps to ensure that they don't come anywhere near him. So the Atago has done some damage to him, but, well, he spent an awful long time not firing his guns at him. If he'd treated Flambass with the same respect that Flambass had treated him, and just assumed that he wasn't a complete idiot and got his guns working a little sooner, 
He might have done a lot more damage, but he didn't. And Flambas has avoided the torpedoes. Of course, the enemy team, those of them who were paying attention to their map, are now fully aware that there's a Tier 10 light cruiser somewhere in this channel. Let's see how many of them were paying attention and are coming back to do something about it. Bearing that in mind, and remember, you steam out of the mouth of this channel and you're showing the broadside of your ship to anything to the left and anything to the right, so Flambass is going to be a little circumspect about this. Checking to the left, nothing. Oh, there's the Anago again. Do you remember what we said earlier about always treating the enemy with respect and assuming that they know what they're doing until they prove otherwise? That Atago isn't even targeting him. <laughs> it's almost as if he didn't know he was there for some strange reason. He's targeting him now, but it's a little too late. Enter player two, a Shimakaze. Now the Shimakaze is obviously only here because he was paying attention to the map and he's come back to get himself a nice juicy torpedo kill on somebody coming out of the mouth of this channel. Flambass has done a fair amount of damage to him. The Shimakaze's popped his smoke. He's checking to see if there were any torpedoes on the way from that Atago. Again, possibly the only reason why the Atago wasn't actually shooting at him with his guns. And even though his hydroacoustic search is on cooldown, you don't have to have hydroacoustic search running. And uh, yep, Atago was firing torpedoes. You don't have to have hydroacoustic search running to know that there are going to be torpedoes coming in your direction when you catch a Shimakaze who came back looking for you at that kind of range. Meanwhile, Flambass has stopped shooting. Now he gets detected again momentarily, but he's not being detected by that Shimakaze. He's on the far side of his smokescreen, and there you can see the shots coming from the Shimakaze, and those shots are telling Flambass that he's not inside that smokescreen anymore. Now he gets spotted momentarily, so for a fraction of a second there he was in some significant danger from that Amagi back there, but now he's inside the Shimakaze's own smokescreen. So now nobody can see him, and that Shimakaze keeps firing. Which is going to have two effects. First, it's telling Flambass exactly in which direction he needs to sail and in which direction he needs to point his guns to be able to start shooting at the Shimakaze once he clears the smokescreen. And it also ensures that he is going to spot the Shimakaze because he kept firing his guns, so his surface detection range is now 12 kilometers. So, yeah, he's dead too. And yet he's still spotted, and it can't be the Amagi, because the Amagi's on the other side of the smokescreen behind him, so there must be another enemy ship within 15 kilometres who's lighting him up for the Amagi and the Atago behind him. 5.4 kilometre range, spots the Yugamo. Realistically, it had to be him. The enemy have three destroyers remaining, but the other two were a moment ago spotted. They're over by capture point Delta on the far eastern end of the map, so it had to be this guy, but a Yugamo at a range of 5.4 kilometers might be a good idea to trigger your hydroacoustic search flat bass because he's almost certainly about to hit you with the torpedo salvo and hydroacoustic search is ready to go he doesn't use it until the last possible moment why is that then well he spotted the Yugamo's torpedo so they're not going to hit him but that's a minotaur now, Flambass knows exactly what a Minotaur is capable of. He's sailing one himself. The Minotaur has four torpedo launchers, two on each side. And that's why he didn't trigger his hydroacoustic search until he did. He wanted to be sure that if that Minotaur up ahead launched any torpedoes, he was going to know about it. And now that the Minotaur's starting to shoot at him, and he's taking shots from the Atago and the Amagi behind him, he's triggered his own smokescreen. He'll see any torpedoes launched by that Minotaur. He doesn't have to worry about not being able to shoot the Minotaur because he's firing his guns and other members of his team are spotting him from the other side of the map. But why is he not sitting safe inside his smokescreen? Why does he suddenly start moving? Well, it's not just because smokescreens are torpedo magnets and that Minotaur will have fired his torpedoes into this smokescreen. In fact, yes, there they are. But that's a Minotaur. It was a Minotaur. And a Minotaur has hydroacoustic search and that guy was at just the range where he could trigger that hydroacoustic search and catch Flambus sitting stationary inside that smokescreen, a sitting duck for anybody else on his team. So he didn't wait for that to happen. He got moving before it happened. And then you have to consider the timing of the cyclone, which has been closing in for some time, but only now has visibility reduced to eight kilometers. So even though he was no longer sitting in the smokescreen and the enemy Minotaur could see him, that Atago and the Amagi 
that's back over there somewhere as well would not have been able to target him because visibility had closed down to 8 kilometers. so he was actually quite safe abandoning that smoke screen and going after the kill on that enemy Minotaur. And of course, with his hydroacoustic search still active, he saw that Atago's torpedoes long before they posed any kind of threat. Atago's turning, is it because he's gotten sick and tired of eating citadels, or is he merely trying to turn the ship around and get his torpedoes away from the other side of the ship? I suspect it's the latter, but that's going to make him a guaranteed citadel and a Kraken Unleashed. Five kills. Flambas has definitely got his carry pants on today. The rest of his team combined have only managed to sink one enemy ship between them. Okay, is there any further reason to hang around here beyond capturing this flag? Visibility is at 8 kilometers thanks to the cyclone. There's only one ship on the enemy team that could be within 8 kilometers and not be spotted, and that's the enemy destroyer, but he isn't here. He's on the other side of the map. How do you know that, Jingles? Well, if there was an enemy destroyer within 8 kilometers, Flambas would know, because he would be spotted. Also, that destroyer was last seen fleeing down that central channel, heading south, and taking a couple of pot shots at Flambas' ship as he was unloading on that second Atago. So, there are no enemy ships within 8 kilometers. Otherwise, somebody would be spotted. In fact, that destroyer has just popped up south in Charlie. And he has some company. They're spotted, we can't see them because they're further than 8 kilometers away and the cyclone has reduced visibility to 8 kilometers. but they have been spotted and they are being engaged by the rest of the team. So they are popping in and out of detection on the map. So that's where we're heading. This cyclone has been a bit of a double-edged sword. I mean it was helping him out earlier because it meant that he was able to deal with the Minotaur and then deal with the Atago. He didn't have to fight them both at the same time. Now of course it means he can't use the 158 kilometer range of his guns and instead has to wait until he's within 8 kilometers of that big curryburst before he can start shooting at him. And nobody in their right mind in a light cruiser wants to be that close to one of those things. Even if he's not aiming at you, you're well within range of his secondaries. So Flambas very wisely decides that it's about time he's starting to get his money's worth out of his smokescreen dispenser. Curryburst eliminated. 192,000 damage done, two enemy ships left. And once again, it's the Cyclone that's working against him. Enemy ship clearly spotted by somebody, somebody shooting at something, and something is shooting back. But until he can get within 8 kilometers, once again his gun crew are enjoying a well-deserved smoke break. You should see him any second now, however. There he is. Target cruiser bearing 185 range, 7.2 kilometers, all gun batteries, fire for effect. And there's 200,000 damage. Can he get 210,000 before his team reaches 1,000 points? Can they kill the rune before his team reaches 1,000 points? Rune, stop angling, we're trying to get 210,000 damage here, you selfish bastard. Come on, there it is, game over. 5 kills, 210,000 damage, and more than double the base experience of the next best player in that match. In a light cruiser, down the central channel on two brothers, alone, and not just getting away with it, making the other team regret their life decisions into the process. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I give you Flambass. That's it for today folks, hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care. And I'll catch you next time.